Hi, I'm Sam with Hammer in Hand. I'm one of the owners here. I'm at a job site in Seattle, Madrona Passive House. And we're here today to talk about um, rock sole insulation. It's a, it's a rock wool. It's basically a material that we've come to after using a whole bunch of different materials to do ex monolithic exterior insulation. So in this climate in the Pacific Northwest, um, we pretty much ended up on a typology, building typology of monolithic exterior insulation in a sheet form uh, that we can then fasten through. Our temperatures are fairly mild here, um, although we get down below freezing uh, for a couple weeks, probably in aggregate. Uh, this is a sample of uh, the Roxol brand stone wool or mineral wool. Um, it's a really great product in that it's basically stone, it's basalt. Uh, that's fired in a furnace with some slag and, and coke for fuel and um, has some binders added to it. Um, it's fairly non-toxic. It's easy to work with. Um, some of its best qualities, however, are fairly unique. It's extremely fire resistant. It has a very high burn point. Um, I think it finally starts melting above 2,000 degrees, like 2105. So it's very much fire resistant. Um, Fire resistance, of course, is rated in assembly, so it's hard to say, give any value a, to any particular material other than just its burn point. Um, so this material um, has as another unique quality. It's extremely hydrophobic. So uh, a close-up of pouring water down the face of this material, and the water just beads up and runs off completely. So in assembly, here's our wall section. Um, we've got a, a two by six stud member here uh, there'll be drywall and plaster to the inside of this. This space here, this five and a half inches, will be taken up, uh, be filled with um, dense packed cellulose, so recycled paper. Um, this building is framed uh, with advanced framing, 24 inches on center, so we've minimized the stud, uh, the framing factor in the wall. Uh, then we've got a zip system uh, sheathing here. We're standing on the bottom on the ground floor of the ceiling. So we have a basement retaining wall here. So that's why we've got a piece of pressure treated sheathing here, just uh, to get us up out of this uh, potentially wet zone, even though this is well waterproofed. Um, the transistance dip sheathing here, this zip sheathing will serve as our airtight member, our weather resistant barrier all in one. So uh, we'll fill any nail holes that are a little bit overdriven. Um, that one uh, will fill all the seams We'll use um, a Prosico joint and seam filler for that. We're a big fan of uh, liquid applied membranes. The punched openings will be treated with the same liquid applied membrane system. And then we're ready to apply um, our exterior insulation. So this, this rough opening at some point will have a window buck. We'll probably come back to this exact same spot and film another segment. Uh, window buck will come and transition past the thickness of this insulation and our rain screen thickness. Again, the rain screen will be a one by four nailed to the outside of this. This stuff is dense enough that we don't worry about uh, differential deflection on the straight line of the face of these rain screen bats. So we can, uh, in assembly, get a really nice smooth flat plane to um, put up all kinds of different sidings, even ones that are sensitive to the underlayment being completely flat, such as metal. Um, so this product has a ton of um, intrinsic value, um, the least of which, um, not the least of which is uh, its ability to um, retard sound transmission. So it's a great sound insulation as well as thermal insulation. Uh, it's fire resistant and hydrophobic. And we talk about sound specifically here in an urban location, although this is a nice quiet neighborhood. We do have planes overhead at Seattle. Um, we have incidental, uh, highway traffic noise and just sort of low urban rumble and this as most passive houses almost all passive houses have are virtually silent inside to the exterior um, this is um, the sort of Cadillac of that uh, product in terms of sound transmission so um, if when we build closer to a freeway or something we definitely want to opt for something like this um, in terms of sound uh, blockage so we pretty much have this system described I think adequately. You'll see it uh, in the future as it goes together. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to point out of this material is really easy to work with. You can just take a, this is a, <laughs> this is a great tool I just found on the job site. Sawzall blade with missing teeth. 
and some duct tape uh, around it to serve as a handle. That's OSHA approved. So um, you just take this and it cuts really easily. And so for just, for an example, so you can take this and just tear it apart like that too. So it's not like it's super dense, but it's not um, soft enough to just come apart. Uh, it's not recommended that you use such a tool to cut this. You'd want to use a serrated knife as opposed to a blade like this. I've wetted this sample, so it's, it's uh, been soaking in a puddle for a while I was testing it. So we don't really have a lot of dust issues, but you want to wear um, uh, protection against particles and use a serrated knife when you cut this normally. Um, so that's about it for a beginning discussion on this uh, rock sole insulation. Um, this is great material. Um, it's become our go-to exterior insulation uh, in this climate, and um, I think we're going to be seeing it on pretty much every one of our projects from here on out.